Okay, I'm going to go through the details of how to create a project like this. In case you're working on something similar, you will be able to understand what are the key steps in order to achieve your goals. First up, the solid model, the geometry was created in SolidWorks. This is the entirety of it. The, this is a water collection chamber. This is my water inlet, water outlet, and the air outlet. The inlets and outlets of the structure were created in such a way where they are all on the center line, and therefore we are able to model it using symmetry. Here is a cut where it's cut in half, and you can see on the inside how it is built. We have two baffles with two little gates at the bottom where the water will, water will be able to flow through. Water comes in here, fills up this compartment, flows through the gate into the second one, and when the water level gets too high, they'll be able to flow over it fill up this chamber, exact same process to go over this, fill up this one and come out on the outlet. Now to make life easier for myself when I go to ANSYS, I enclosed this open part of my structure with a wall as you can see here. I created these little cut-ins because when I will go to ANSYS, we'll be separating fluid domain from solid domain and having these flat areas will help us quite a bit. Now, in order to transfer this geometry into ANSYS, I'm gonna save as, come down here, and I'm gonna pick IGES. This is the best file. We can save it and transfer it over to ANSYS Fluent. Now we're going to go to ANSYS, we're going to open up Workbench, Fluid Flow Fluent, drag it and create a session for yourself. In Geometry, right click, Import Geometry, look for the geometry that you want to import, click Open, and I'm going to use Design Modeler. Okay, once Design Modeler opened, we have to click Generate. And here's our structure. We have imported it. Okay, now we have to separate the fluid domain, which will be inside, and from the solid domain. Right now, we don't have a fluid domain. Inside, there's only a void. Click on this, we can see this is our solid. But that's not what we want. We want the, only the fluid domain inside. So let's separate that. We're gonna click on the edge selector and we have to enclose all our inlets and outlets. Select these two. Surface from edges, apply and generate. Go. This one is closed. Let's do the same for the other two. Let's have surface from edges, apply, generate, and for the third one, surface from edges, apply, and generate. All right. All three of my inlets and outlets are closed in. Now we can go to tools and fill. Here, a extraction type by cavity. We're going to click on it and we're going to change it to by caps. Then go to generate. And if you can see, the second item appeared right here. The first one is my solid. And if you click on the second one, now you can clearly see that the fluid domain has been separated from the solid domain. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Just so we know for sure what's what. Now, 
when we take this to meshing, it's gonna mesh everything. We don't want that. We only want to mesh the fluid domain. Therefore, the solid domain we're gonna suppress. This way, it's not gonna come along. Save and close, and let's go to meshing. Okay, here is my mesh that I generated. The setup that I followed, I clicked on mesh and I used only global settings. I did not select faces one by one and added sizing to it that way. I did not do that. I only used global settings. I went to sizing use adaptive sizing turn it to yes and resolution you can click up and down and i you can see the higher you go the finer the resolution i selected five that's what you can see here and quality i went to smoothing and changed it to high this helps us have a better transition between small and large elements and this is what I ended up with. Now, one last thing before we go to setup, name selection. I named each surface according to its function. Left click, then right click and create name selection and enter here, water inlet. Same thing, this was my air outlet, water outlet. All the walls are designated according to what kind of wall they are. This one, the one where I cut my structure in half, this I'm gonna call symmetry, right here. After all these are done, we can save and proceed to setup. In the workbench, make sure you update your mesh and there it is we can see the green check mark now we can go to setup here i'm gonna click double precision parallel and make sure you select these according to your computer mine will be 4f1 how many cores and gpu settings you have Okay, once it opens, we can see our geometry imported. We can do a go to console, do a check, make sure there's no errors, report quality. We can see that we have 1.9 for orthogonal quality to the 10 to the negative 1 and aspect ratio 1.39, 10 to the positive 1, which are, which are acceptable. We're gonna select transient. We're gonna set up gravity in the Y section, negative 9.81. Now we're gonna go to models. Since we are mixing two fluids, water and air, we're gonna have to set up our multi-phase model, okay? But before we do that, make sure we go to materials, to fluids, and we only have air. So we're gonna have to add a new one. Go to Fluent Database. Scroll to the bottom, select Water Liquid. Leave everything as is and click Copy. This will transfer it right here in the materials. Now we have Water Liquid added. Close, this one close. Uh, generated this fluid one. Gonna delete. There you go. I just want air and water liquid. These two are my my fluids. Now we can come back to multi-phase, and we're gonna have to select volume of fluid and click apply. Now 
if you look up here at the top, the phases and phase interaction became active. We can click on phases and we have two phases right here. Our primary phase, we're gonna have this as air and make sure air is selected down here. Click apply. Then for our second phase, this will be water. And make sure water is selected down here. Click apply. And we can now uh, phase interaction between air and water. Surface tension coefficient, change the none to constant. Depends what fluid you're working with, but for this, my application, I'm going to use 0 0.0. 23. Apply. Close. Now, energy equation, there's no heat transfer or anything like that, so we're going to leave it off. Our viscous setup, we're going to, since this is a turbulent model, I'm going to use K epsilon. Everything else I'm going to leave as is. Click OK. Our cells and conditions are taken care of automatically since it's going to be a mix. Boundary conditions. Now, our inlet. Let's take care of our inlet first. I'm going to double click on it. And for this application, I'm going to select velocity magnitude to be 2 meters per second. Click OK. Now, our air part. There's nothing really we need to do here, so leave it alone, okay. But at the water part, we can see that there's volume fraction. So this means that at the inlet, what do we want coming in? If we leave zero, that means zero water coming in. If we put a one, that means only water coming in. If we put 0 0.5, that means half water, half air is coming in. I want only water coming in at the inlet, so therefore we're gonna put a 1. Inlet taken care of, internal areas, outlets, symmetry and walls, they all take care of themselves in this situation. We can click on them one by one and make sure they are correctly labeled. We have walls. Okay, Wait, let's click on symmetry, right click, and the type. Let's make sure it recognizes it correctly as a symmetry for type. Right here, type of symmetry. Very good. That's all for our boundary conditions. Let's go to monitors, check our resi residuals. I'm going to leave them at 0 0.001. Next, let's take care of calculation activities. Now, this one, create solution data export. And what I'm doing here, I'm gonna select CFD post, split domain, I want all my walls selected. I want my pressure, velocity magnitude, velocity X, Y, Z. And all the way at the end, I want volume fraction for air, volume fraction for water. Now, what I'm doing here is reducing all the data that the software will be saving. All this stuff, I don't want it saved. This makes a huge difference in how fast the calculation goes and how big of a file will be created. At first, I... I created this problem without symmetry and I've let the computer save all those data. It generated a 600 gigabyte file and it took several days to solve. Now I'm doing symmetry. I'm saving only the important stuff that I want. Therefore, this will generate a 157 gigabyte file and it will take half the time as well. Okay, that's why this step was important. Now we can go to 
initialization initialization i'm gonna pick standard initialization compute from water inlet and initial values i want the very last one water volume fraction i'm gonna change it to zero i want my structure inside to start is empty only air in it the water will be flown in now we can click initialize good let's go to graphics contour and i'm gonna set up a contour plot vof volume of fluid phases and i want water phase and I want it to show me at the symmetry line. Save and display. There it is. I want to see what's happening. This, what I'm doing right now, it will help me show what's going on visually at the same time while the convergence will be happening. And for that, I will set up, go to solutions, create solution animations. And here I'm going to create an animation of all the images that it's showing me here on the symmetry line. And I'm going to leave the name animation one. And instead of uh, having it record every single image for every single time step, I'm going to change record after every two time steps. Only every second time, time step image turn it into uh, the video. And I want VOF, the contour plot that I just created. Okay. Now we can go to run calculations and set up our information here. Uh, number of time steps, I'm gonna select higher number, 3500. Time step size, I'm gonna pick 0 0.01. And in case we have a, an issue with convergence, I might even jump lower than that. But if we have good convergence, then we'll leave it here. Max iterations, I'm going to put at 50. And let's see. I'm going to click calculate. So far, it's a good sign. All our equations are nicely converging we can see the trend is showing downwards after every single time step 